that everyone this morning have a few announcements. Uh, they have started to make Easter candy again. And when are they doing that? Um, we're going to work on it Thursday. Thursday. In the morning and then in the evening, 10 o'clock and 6. And evening. On yes. Thursday. The sample um, tray is back there to look at, not to actually taste, but to look oh. at. <laughs> And the order forms are there. We would like the order forms as soon as possible to get started in, um, but by May 6th, I think it is. Not May, March. <laughs> March 6th, I think is what. Also, the Lancaster trip is, um, the Lancaster trip, uh, we're giving you till the 20th to uh, sign up for the bus and get all your all monies in. By the 20th, uh, Ash Wednesday service will be at noon at Otterbein. So if you show up at noon at Otterbein on the 17th for Ash Wednesday service. And that is everything I No, have. soup cell. Oh, the soup cell this Saturday. So make sure you come on out. We've got all kinds of soups lined up for that soup cell. So come out, and yes, chili will be there this time. So come on out for come on out to the soup set. It is from 11 to 1 on Saturday. And I wore my steeler tie today because hope's free to turn. And uh, not, not this year. We'll get them next year. All right. Let's uh, begin our worship service and bring bring forth the house.
in distress, God is always present with us. When we call out, God hears us. The name of the Lord brings comfort to heavy hearts. In God's name alone, we put our trust. The Lord will help those who seek God. God will answer the prayers of the people. Some take pride in their might and accomplishments. We will boast in God alone. We rise and stand on the righteousness of God. Let us worship God, who is faithful, merciful, and just. Almighty God, sometimes, sometimes the difficulties and burdens of our lives cause us to doubt your goodness. We are an anxious people, often grasping to trust in your promise to work all things for good. Increase our faith and grant us your peace that our lives will demonstrate our trust in you. We ask this with confidence knowing that we are your beloved children. Amen. Amen. Proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became a Jew, in order to win Jews. In those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. So with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join your unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By his baptism of suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to the church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death. You made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread and gave thanks to you, O Heavenly Father. And then he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take Eat, this is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat it. Be remembered for me. But when the supper was over, he again gave thanks to God and gave the cup to his disciples and said, Drink from it. All of it. This is my blood of a new covenant. Pour it out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so it is in remembrance of these mighty acts of our Lord Jesus Christ that we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. And we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is alive. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us. On these gifts of bread and wine that they will be for us the body and blood of Christ. That we can be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other. One in ministry to the world until Christ can come in his final victory. And we will feast at his heavenly bank. To your Son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Paul writes, so that we may be for all the body of Christ. Take and eat and remember. And so we remember that we are forgiven of our sins through the blood of Christ. Take and drink and remember. Praise be the holy name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's take a moment to say hello to one another. Got a few extra faces around today. See everybody? 
Um, uh, we take our offering at the end of the service today and we'll leave the plate in the back of the church. We're also, this has been uh, our sweet herbal Sunday. We're supposed to bring some cranberries and things like that. And that's up here on the front pew. And uh, that goes to community ministry. So we're going to pray for our offerings that we have brought here today. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for all that you give to us. All that you bring to our tables. Help us, O oh Lord, as we share it with others. We pray for the offering that we bring. Both finances that support the church and its ministries. And hopefully it's supporting the kingdom. And the food that we have brought that will go on people's tables that they may be nourished. And I pray, O oh Heavenly Father, not only with food, but with the spirit that it is given. And we pray, Lord God, this day, that you give us wisdom to use what we have been given in good stewardship and care. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Elsie. Uh, Elsie's a uh, uh, cousin and person like a sister to her, Winnie Davis, has passed away. And uh, I'd like to pray for that. Thing. And there's a prayer on here for Doreen Province. All right, Doreen Province. Okay, and we go. Let us go to our prayer time then with our uh, prayer hymn, which is Sweet Hour of Prayer.
Father, we are here for this hour of worship. We sing a song, a sweet hour of prayer, and no oh, Heavenly Father, we're lucky to get it by then. Yet, Lord, you take whatever time you find. Continue to urge us to pray without ceasing. Come back to you. So, Lord God, we are here this day lifting our prayers. Acknowledging, O oh, Heavenly Father, our blessings that we have received, a blessing mostly of the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, given for us, that our sins will be washed away and there is a hope eternal in your heavenly kingdom. Father God, on this day, as we lift up joy, the joy of Michelle's mother being home and, and her son getting a job, oh, a great blessing in, in a family's new grandbabies on the way. Such excitement. Heavenly Father, for the glory of life, we give you praise. Lord, we do pray for those who still struggle with the COVID virus. We're praying for the leader family and many others. We pray for Joreen, <coughs> traveling mercies, mercies for Eric, for Jeff Kearns and his surgery. We pray for the distribution of the vaccines. We pray for the family of Lincoln. Lord, we pray for our shut-ins and those who can't get out to worship on a Sunday morning. We pray, O oh, Heavenly Father, your blessings are upon us. We pray for those that are at home watching on their Facebook or on a website. We ask, O oh, Lord God, that you be with them as well. And fill this place with your presence. This we pray in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm doing an Old Testament lesson this morning from Isaiah 40, and if you remember last week I preached on I preached that Isaiah 40 was uh, one of the scriptures was used. But I think it's uh, something we need to continue to go back to at this time. And we're starting verse 21. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circles of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely is their stem taken root in the earth, for he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who creates these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strength to the powerless, even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up like wings, on wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
especially in verse 30, I go to Cousin Vin, you know, and even you took pain with me. Yeah, I mean, yes, it is. This is a sermon this morning where the preacher needs to practice what he preaches. Have you been burned out lately with all the news? Have you been burned out by it yet? If you're not, good for you, but I know so many that are. You sit back and you look at what we've gone through this past year with the COVID, with the, the election, with the election results, the challenge of the election results, and what happened in January, <coughs> the vaccine, is the vaccine rolling out, is there a new strain, you know, it's jazz, like, all day. And throw on top of that some of the other news again. Some of the stuff we even forgot, like that the government released UFO photos. We missed that. How about the murder hornets? Have you forgotten there were murder hornets? All this news that had been coming down the pipe. No wonder we all got information hangover. We're quarantined. We can't go in for a We watch news programs all day. I remember when there was only three stations that carried news. And for a half hour at the end of the day. At my home, we only had two channels. We couldn't pick up CBS. So I got Huntley and Brinkley. I didn't get Walter Cronkite, you know, Walter Cronkite, you know, remember Walter Cronkite? That's the way it is. <laughs> right? He didn't say, that's the way I think it should be. He didn't give you his opinion. He told you what the news was. This happened. A, B, C, boom, make your own decisions. But somewhere along the line, we got into this 24-hour news cycle. And it started on CNN, it's Ted Turner. But Ted Turner never intended for a 24 hour news station. He was just wanting to plug in breaking news as it came in on his network. Turner Broadcast. The thing is, news breaks at different hours of the day all over the world. So it seemed like a news program, something newsworthy came in about every hour. And the next thing you know, he had to, he created this CNN. So then you got a 24-hour news server. Then you get other networks jumping on board, MSNBC, Fox, um, Newsmax. All coming in with the more news, more news. Gotta watch the news. Neil Postman in 1985 wrote a book called Amusing Ourselves to Death. And uh, he, he ran into this, this loop of impotence. The news elicits from you a variety of opinions about which you can do nothing except to offer them as more news about which you can do nothing. He writes this in, 19, in the 19, before there was internet. Not, so not only did you get your news all the time, Back in 1985 on TV, now today, you carry the news in your pocket. And what's it do? It leaves us depressed, powerless. We don't trust the news sources that we're looking at. Everything's superficial, sensationalized, inaccurate, hopelessly, hopelessly biased. The result is the more news you watch, the more anxiety you feel. And if you're not feeling anxiety, you're going the other, the other way. You're feeling totally desensitized to what you're watching. So then a number of 400,000 is uh, So then you hear of news of people being gassed in a country. 
You shrug your shoulders. That's that just happens. That's the way it is. John Krasinski, the actor, during his COVID thing, tried to tried to put some levity to it all, and, and he put on a little thing on the internet. Uh, some good news it was called. We tried to find good news clippings to put out there. What do you do though? Why, how do you handle it all? Well, I'll tell you what my wife told me to do. Shut it off! <laughs> There's better things to watch on TV, especially the property brothers. <laughs> Shut it off! Or try to find something better. When Isaiah writes this today, he is writing to a people whose mindset was total negativity. These people were saying, uh, my way is hidden from the Lord and my Right is disregarded by my God. These are exiled people. They were living within the reality of the exile. But God is announcing through the prophet, you are going to return. God is changing their mindset. God's saying, you are going to return from this exile. You're, this ex you're going to re-exodus back into your homeland. And I'm going to set up a place where you will be free, where you are going to be restored, and I am going to dwell with you and feed you and protect you like a shepherd protects his flock. That's good news. It's news that God's people wanted to hear. News that puts all other news into perspective. While we're worried about the forces of nature, Hurricanes, wildfires, cold snaps, nor'easters, all these natural disasters and nat nature causing problems. Reading verse 12, that God measures the waters in the hollow of his hand. God's got nature. And our daily news focuses. Look what's happening between nations. Look what's going on in China. Look what's going on in Russia. Look what's going on in, in Miramar. Here's what God reminds us. Nations are like a drop from a bucket and are accounted as dust on my scales. Dust on my scales. Don't even wait. There is nothing before him. And they are counted as less than nothing and emptiness. And while the news needs us to be constantly concerned about safety and wealth, God is reminding us to be mindful of what we fret over, because what we fret over is the thing that it will become our idol. It becomes an idol. We and but what we set up cannot be compared to the surpassing glory of God who creates all things. And the glory and the character of God provides us with the best news that we could possibly hear. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? God said, I'm the one who sits above the circle of the earth, and I rule over it. Natural disasters, calamity, they dominate our new news cycles. Even rulers, even those who are making the news cycles, whether it be Dr. Fauci or Representative Taylor Greene or Putin or Xi or Pelosi, or even Tom Brady. <laughs> Those rulers and newsmakers who crop our screens today are as nothing to God. The God who sees them like withered plants, 
that are here today and gone tomorrow. No one who is making the news today will ever be God's equal. He is the one who has created them. And these are powerful reminders for the people of God. Like Israel, who got caught up in the news of despair and tragedy. Who got sucked into the world's idolatry, fear, and intrigue. The results, the, the, the news fatigue made them believe that their plight was hidden from God. That's when God comes in shouting. Shouting the good news. I have you. I love you. I'm looking out for you. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator to the ends of the earth. And he says that in verse 28. He also said it in verse 12. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. To emphasize to us. God is the creator. God is in control. God has you under his watch. No matter how bad the news cycle is, God will win out. God will win out. God does not get news fatigue. He said, Isaiah puts it this way. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the power. Not only does God have a picture of the long view of history, the long game, he is offering power and strength to us who have to live in the now. We tend to get busy and come up with some way that we should solve our problems. And once we get it in our mind how to solve the problem, we make sure we tell somebody about it. We give them our opinion. But as this pandemic has taught us, there are limits to our knowledge and to our abilities. If we trust only in ourselves, we are bound to experience the fatigue of despair and we fail to reach the ends of our abilities. The energy and idealism of youth can lead to disappointment and exhaustion when reality sets in. Folks, we can't fix everything. But rather than fret or fixate or forego the news, Isaiah tells us to turn our attention otherwise to someone more important, to turn to our Creator God. Instead of waiting on the news to by constantly refreshing our phones and scrolling through our social medias, Isaiah invites us, wait on the Lord. That doesn't mean sit around and do nothing. That doesn't mean turn a blind eye. But to wait is to look for God to provide us with perspective, with hope, and a purpose through which prayer and immersion into his holy word will make a difference in your life. How much might our news fatigue be mitigated, for example, if we put just as much time into our prayer lives as we do into our phone time? The average American spends 11 hours a day in front of a screen. Whether a computer or a phone or a television. And if you're watching at home, that's okay. If you're spending time watching this, just let me know. I'll make that clear. However, what, are we spending that time with God? Can we spend an equivalent of time 
listening to God and bringing our fatigue and our worries to Him and allowing us the opportunity to be in perspective that God has the strength to deal with what we are facing, what, what the world is facing. Countering the news with a daily discipline of time spent in the presence of God helps us to pick up the pieces of the world today. Now I'm getting on my screen now because I need something on it. We do this for all of us. If I start every day as I have, past this, past next year. Waking up in the morning and turning on the news. I am crippling myself for a day. I'm crippling my day. How am I to soar on wings like eagles if I'm plucking my feathers before I even get up? What better way to start a day instead of grabbing the remote and turning that TV on? Pick up this book and read the word first. Have a devotion and read, get, get in that devotion. Then it's up a room. What would happen? If God came first. <coughs> and the reason I pull up the phone is because I it, this whole sermon story kept reminding me of an old song. Written in 1959 by Merle Hatton. There's a family Bible on the table. Its pages torn and hard to read. But the family Bible on the table will ever be my key to memory. At the end of day when work was over and when the evening meal was done, Dad would read to us from the family Bible and we count our many blessings one by one. I can see us sitting round the table where from the family Bible Dad would read. I can hear my mother softly singing, Rock of Ages, Rock of Ages, left for me. Now this old world of ours is filled with trouble. This old world would also better be if we found more Bibles on the table and mothers singing rock of ages cleft for me. I can see us sitting round the table where from the family Bible dad would read. And I can hear my mother softly singing Rock of ages, rock of ages, left for me. Rock of ages, rock of ages, left for me. More time in that Bible. More time with rock of ages. Less time with Sean and Coop and Morning Joe. Let God be first and let God in control. Trust in him. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn today is a little short one. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. <laughs>
Lord is in this place and in you. But don't let us just stay in this place. Take it to the world around us. The world needs the presence.